and we're back for another segment of CN Live. Um, and before we went to break, I was speaking with Andrew Hauser about modern outfitters and some of their philosophies and style. Um, now, I first walked into Modern Outfitters here, the location they have here in Dallas, uh, several weeks ago. And I was, like I said in the last segment, I was pretty, pretty much blown away um, just with the atmosphere, the energy in, in the place, and all the stuff that they had as well. Um, and so much so that um, I kind of took a liking to one of their, their uh, high precision rifles builds. And um, I decided to currently have basically my own build built for me <laughs> in many ways. So, um, so Andrew, kind of, all right. So I was, when I was talking to you, I was like, you know, I, I really wanted to, and I stated this in one of the episodes of Noir, I really want to kind of start getting into the long range precision thing, uh, long range precision side of shooting. And, um, and I want something that, you know, that I feel, I want to start on something that's, you know, that's going to be special to me, something that's going to have more of a, a custom touch, something I have to say. So I didn't just want to kind of go out and just buy some, a Remington 700 and call it a day, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, I, I definitely look for any excuse in any reason to buy a gun. <laughs> so <laughs> what better excuse than to, hey, I'm going to get into long range precision shooting, so let's buy a gun. Um, how's that for panic buying? So. Sure. <laughs> so, so before we get into that, let's talk about the, some of the bills that you guys typically build. Um, you guys started off with Glocks, correct? Yes. All right. So you started off in the, in, the, in the Glock customization world, and you know I've had several companies on here who who are involved in the customization, high, high end customization of Glocks as well. Kind of talk about the the approach that you guys took in terms of how you guys customize Glocks because it's, it's rather unique, and then and there's a lot of style cues that typically some of the custom houses tend to kind of, I don't want to say mimic each other, but kind of, you know, do some of the same things. Um, right. But that's not necessarily the case with you guys. So kind of talk me through what, what you guys would, were thinking when you decided to kind of start customizing Glocks. So our thinking on the Glocks is 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 our same thinking on our ARs and the same thinking on our, our bulk guns. Mm -hmm. So we're not overly tactical. We're not overly like, geared towards the hunting. We try to make, take the best from both sides. And we're all about practicality. Um, so we try to make take weight out of firearms as much as possible um, without sacrificing performance. So and in, and in the process, if you can make it look really cool, hey, that's that's a win, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the blocks, you know, a, a lot of customers come in, they see things on Instagram, they see things on websites, and they want that. And the 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 bad part is almost everything takes time. You have to wait. So you send it off to somebody, and they do an awesome job, right? Yeah. And run a full custom shop like like we do. Um, and somebody can look you in the eye and say, you can tell them, hey, it's going to take eight weeks. And they say, hey, I'm cool with it. The next week, they're always in there. Hey, is it done yet? Is it done yeah, yet? Yeah, yep. um, yep. So our deal, with our, <laughs> yeah, our, our deal with our box and several of our ARs and even some of our bolt guns is to do a true custom and do it in, in some popular configurations, but have it ready that you can walk out with it. The go ready and, custom. <laughs> uh, yes, in our Glocks in the store, exactly. We have, uh, you know, we'll machine the slides um, in, in a, several different patterns uh, to take a little weight out. And again, it looks cool. Uh, we add night sights, uh, we stipple them. Uh, it includes one of our Kydex holsters we make, and then we Cerakote it in a variety of colors. And then before they leave, if they want us to change out the triggers or do something like that, we do it right there while they're doing their paperwork. We don't, you know, they don't have to come back. Gotcha. So that's been, you know, that's been really good for us in that folks come in. And now we still get the questions, hey, can I bring my Glock to you? Yeah. And we did that when we were first starting out. Um, but we don't want to put ourselves in a position of where we disappoint a customer. Service is everything to us. So right now we're just selling the ones that, that we do in our shop, and it's it's been great for us. And the same thing now we can we'll still take custom orders. Yeah. Uh, they just have to be clear that hey, it's going to take six to eight weeks to to do it exact in in a different pattern or something like that. I, I do think, from a consumer standpoint, I'm just going to put my consumer hat on. Um, you know, <laughs> we're a little bit unfair to you guys when it comes to the custom orders, because in, I'm just going to tell you from a consumer. At least when I had my first custom Glock done, in my head, I, I thought when you like when I gave my gun to you, I was like, not you in particular, but when I, when I gave the gun to the company that I was dealing with, I thought there were going to be like little like magical creatures in the back who are just going to be working on my gun 24 hours a day, seven days a week and get this thing spit out. So when you tell me seven to eight weeks, I'm like, oh, well, I'll probably get it back in a week. Right. I thought you I thought they were just overestimating. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of people understand 
what it really means when we say when they say when you guys say custom, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, it, this isn't like a like we have like a, a, a factory line where you just kind of guys are just spinning these things out because that would kind of undermine the whole notion of custom in many ways. Right. Um, so it's it's definitely I want to apologize on behalf of all the consumers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I, but I will tell you this from the there are you know and there's shops out there. I think some places are scared to be up front with folks and and yeah. if you. Our deal is, and what I tell our shop, if we send some through our custom shop, if I if, if I tell the customers it's going to be six weeks, it's going to be six weeks. So the whole thing of six weeks and then it turns into three months and four months and six months, that's what gives you know yeah, some folks which is a, true. a bad thing. And you don't want to turn down business, but at the same time, are you going to have a repeat customer or, or a one-time customer? Yeah. So yeah, there, there's both sides are both sides need to learn a little bit through the exchange, but it's we really like having those in the case. Mm. Um, and it's fun for us at the shop. I mean, because uh, we've gotten it now to where uh, the guys at the shop won't tell me what's coming. So it's exciting for us to unzip them and see a new camo pattern or yeah. a new stipple pattern. Or, you know, then we've all, oh, man, maybe I might buy that one. We're the worst addicts th that there are uh, over our own guns. We want to buy every one that we take out of the case. Gotcha. Now, um, now these guns are now these guns are designed to be, are they designed to be carry guns? Are they designed to be... Um, guns that are just kind of for show. What, what's the deal, typically speaking, when, when you guys put out a custom gun? Anything we produce, whether it's custom, um, and everything we do is custom to some degree, are meant to be used. Uh, okay. We want them to be used. Um, so when you're talking carry, we modify the Glock 43. is super popular. Um, we do some of the SIGs. We do uh, the M&Ps. Um, we do the 19. Um, but whether it's our ARs or um, or our bolt guns or the pistols, the reason we paint them the way we do, the, way, the reason we do finishes the way we do, um, and they've been through law enforcement trials, uh, approval processes where we literally try to break our guns. Um, no, they, yeah, they look awesome, but they're meant to run. They're meant to be abused. And if you break it, send it back. Everything we do has a lifetime warranty, and we stand behind it. And that's, that's why guys will take them out and run them. That's awesome. So – I want to talk about this MR1 precision rifle, right? Uh, the one I fell in love with when I walked into the shop. So I'm having a custom build. And first of all, I want to talk about the caliber because we kind of we kind of discussed the caliber choice and option. My natural inclination was to go 308. Um, you kind of sold me on the 6.5 Creedmoor. Let's let's talk about why you had a preference from a, for a 6.5 Creedmoor versus a 308 in that sense. Yeah, so the, the MR1 is the, the brainchild of my, my partner, Eric Stubbs. So mm -hmm. we're both, you know, even though we have ARs, um, we're bolt gun guys. We like shooting long range. We like hunting with them. We like pretty woodstocks, all that. Um, when, we, when we decided we wanted to do our own bolt gun, and when I say do it, design the, design the action ourselves, build it ourselves, do everything in-house, um, we wanted to, we wanted to stop start at the top of the food chain versus the other way around. Uh -huh. um, we decided to narrow it and only have two calibers to as the introduction, and we wanted to limit it to a hundred rifles that we were going to do this year. Again, don't be everything to everybody, right, but yeah. do it really well. Um, so we came out to three hundred eight, the six five Creedmoor three hundred eight. You know, we don't have to talk about that. It's been around, it's popular, it's proven, so on and so forth. Um, the Creedmoor is one that we started playing with. Um, in the hunting realm and the long range shooting probably a year and a half ago. And what I tell guys, especially on steel, and you can look at some of the national matches, it, to me, it's cheating <laughs> and it, it is, and there's nothing wrong with a 308. I mean, there's guys out there watching this, well, oh, whatever I, I can do. You're right. You can do a lot of the, some of the same things with a 308. Once you get past 500 yards, um, you know, the six, five Creedmoor just really shines. And I've taken very, you know, novice shooters that take a long range class for the first time and with very, you know, anything, you know, I can make a shooter with the right tools, right? The right scope, the right rifle. Mm -hmm. But that caliber, especially um, whether it's in wind, whether it's at long range, um, the projectile itself, it's, it's a javelin. Um, and it just, it just performs really well. And we've been able to do some things both in the hunting world um, and shooting steel consistently that we can't do as consistent with the 308. So we're, we're in love with it. Now it's, it's got its place, mm -hmm. um, all cutting scenarios. Um, but especially when Hornady came out with their new ELD line of bullets. Um, and really those were some of the first ones we tried with the six, five Creedmoor. And we saw what it did in the hunting arena, arena at long range. Mm -hmm. Some of the new tests about how those bullets perform in gel at 150 yards, and they're basically performing the exact same way in gel at 800 yards. Now we got some. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, you didn't tell me that part when we talked about it. But, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, and, and so like for, for a lot of people who have a hard time really understanding, you know, the, I, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people out there who aren't really even familiar with 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, is that, is that a round that's readily available? Is that kind of a specialty round? Because I know when I first came, when I first became familiar with it, I thought it was one of these specialty rounds that I was never going to be able to find anyway. So I just didn't even really put much attention to it. You know, it's interesting. The 6.5 Creedmoor, so yes, the, the ammo is readily available and it's gaining more and more every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the same conversation we have on the 6.8 SPC. And people just don't, there's so many calibers out there. Yeah. And so guys are like, hey, can I get it? Well, yeah, you, here's all these different flavors and everybody makes them. Um, so yes, it's readily available. Available. More, more guys are jumping on the bandwagon every day. The six millimeter variants, whether it's the you know the, the two sixty and the and the various six by, so on and so forth. Where there's a bunch of different uh, combinations, are just so popular in the long range crowd right now that all the ammo manufacturers and, and are jumping on board. Oh, yeah. And the cool thing is, even if you're not doing, um, even if you're not using say a, a trimmer three reticle or 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 a or dialing or using a ballistic app. Any of the scopes that have true yardage turrets and things like that, like a, a loophole CDS, yeah. you can do some cool things with that ELD bullet in a hunting arena that make it an awesome caliber, uh, especially when you start getting out west or south Texas where you're taking longer shots. And you're not you're not kicking yourself to death like you do with the 300 Ultra Mag or some of the 300s. Um, I just, I'm to the point now, I don't want to be cold when I'm hunting, and yeah. I don't want to to beat me to death i don't need to <laughs> yeah. my hands with it and, and have a big boom and, yeah. and have all that recoil yeah so now with, with the particular rifle that i'm going to be building with you guys so what 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 sets this particular rifle apart from all your kind of traditional uh precision rifles in that sense okay so there's a lot of great gun makers out there that make true custom rifles bolt guns and then some guys that make what i'll call classify as semi-custom right um we wanted to design our action from scratch, mm-hmm. so we went with a three lug design versus a traditional two lug. Um, our bolt throw is sixty degree versus the uh, standard ninety degree, and because of the three lug and because of how we designed the bolt, it operates on a, a very straight push pull. Um, that once you're used to it, uh, guys who have grown up shooting, whether it's a Remington or some other traditional two lugs, um, but once you're used to that straight pull, are super fast. The lockup is super tight. Um, you know, we went with an all titanium action, um, again, just because we wanted to, uh, <laughs> just, just to do something different. Yeah. Uh, it's distinctive with the hex fluting that we do on the bolts and on the barrels. Uh, we tin coated it, um, again, because we wanted it to, to be distinctive and, and stand out for the crowd. Yeah. Well, it definitely caught my attention when I walked into the store that day. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I'm going to be posting progress pricks as uh, the rifle comes along. So, but I mean, uh, and I really enjoyed speaking with you. I'm pretty sure you're going to be seeing more of me here since we are both in the same city now and I will be visiting a store quite often. You might need to make a bed for me in there somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate it, Andrew. It's been a pleasure, man. And I hope you have a good one. Well, we appreciate you and everything you do. Your rifle just came back from paint today, so pictures are heading your way. Oh, man, loving it. Loving it already, man. I might not even make it to the next segment. Forget you guys. I'm going to look at the pictures. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, we'll see you. All right, and we'll be back. I'm actually really excited. 